Trevor has a QS background and he's, uh, he's gone into IT consultancy now. He was uh, one of the pioneers on the course and he's, uh, he's going to speak now about his experience on the course and uh, what it brought to industry and that for him. Okay, thank you. Um, just the uh, title of the, <coughs> the presentation, um, the, the emergence of a new discipline in the construction industry. Uh, I think we've been living not at the, at the cutting edge uh, on the course itself, I think we've been at the bleeding edge, uh, or bleeding edge, whichever way you want to say it. Um, we've been working with software packages which are still in development, you know, still need refinement, still need a lot of work. Um, and we've gone through a hard 18 months on the course itself. Um, so just to um, start off, um, I'm a quantity slayer, do a bit of project management. I graduated in 1991 from Bolton Street with a BSc in Construction Economics. Um, at the time, the industry was, was, was rock bottom. I mean, the parallels between the industry in 1991 and in 2011 are, are, are scary. I mean, at that time, we used to judge the health of the construction industry by count, counting tower cranes around the city. There was 14 cranes up in Dublin in 1991. Both of them were down in the customer stocks. At the height of the boom, driving back in across the M50, um, Treasury, or Danager, had a site in Tallaght that had 14 cranes on one side. 14 cranes. Now, if you go and count them, there's 14 cranes again. You know, so the parallels there were back similar to where we were in 1991. Um, I, started working on the light rail project in 1996 as a network administrator and I would have gotten a feel for implementing project planning systems, engineering information management systems, uh, contract control systems. Um, I had the bright idea in, in 2001 that well, I go out by myself and, and I, I try and upskill the industry. Um, typical, as the boom was starting, I decided to move out of quantity surveying, which was the cash cow during the boom, and got into IT. Um, but the problem I found was that companies were too busy making cash. They didn't want to invest in IT, they didn't have to. If they had a problem, they threw money at it. They threw bodies at it. And it's all itself. They didn't want to know about fancy systems to improve efficiencies or improve um, contract control or tracking documentation. Um, I'm Microsoft and Cisco certified, so we picked those up along the way. Um, why this course? I've been asking myself that question for 18 months, and my wife's been asking why or why did you do this course. Um, you're probably all thinking, an old dog trying to teach yourself new tricks. I'm sort of thinking, well, maybe I'm an experienced pup trying to get new skills. Um, as you can see from the cartoon here, I'm the old dog in the middle pulling a rubber turkey out of a, a hat when it should have been a rabbit. And that's um, Alan Hoare's Academy of Magic. Um, I needed to upskill. I needed to change what I was offering my clients. I mean, what I was offering my clients was all IT support. You know, it was, if there was issues with, with um, equipment or software, that's what I was doing, I was fixing it. Now, some of my clients, and one of them's in the audience, they might argue about me upskilling. They might say, well, you need to skill before you can upskill. And um, I have a great knack that when I go into a building, networks slow down, machines slow down. And I have a fearsome reputation there. Um, I think I'm an old dog, I am learning new, new tricks, new skills on the course itself. But seriously, the reason I went back, domestic construction has taken a nosedive. Output is down by 70% since 2007. Unemployment's gone through the roof. Most firms are in survival mode. Um, they're trying to do more with less resources. Lower fees, smaller, and in no cases, um, no margins. I mean, there was a press release from the SCS on Sunday, and I mean, it was scary. They announced that in a survey, 52% of all tenders are coming back below cost. And the SCS estimate that there are approximately 17% below realistic construction costs. So, I mean, it's another train wreck that's about to happen. Um, so, the idea was to go back, do the course, upskill. Just to give you a sort of a construction IT perspective, I mean, as I see things, where we were in the past and where we are at the moment, we live in a, in a 2D world where there's uncoordinated construction documents. Um, paper is king, IT is great, it allows us to produce more paper, 
we can produce it more often, we can produce it faster, we can produce it in colour. We're, we're, we're paper based. Um, email is, is the primary form of project communication. It's made the whole paper monster e e even worse. We've massive amounts of data and information generated, huge amounts of knowledge are lost. I mean, on the course itself, there's a module on knowledge management. And one of the figures stuck in my mind is that 42% of a firm's knowledge, and this was a study with Xerox, exists in the heads of individual employees in the company. So 42% of a firm's knowledge is tacit. It's in people's heads. 24% um, is held on paper, which is still, it's hard to share. 22% is on personal devices such as PCs, laptops. 12% is in the shared electronic environment. So we're very, very reliant on paper. There's not a huge amount of knowledge transfer between um, employees in, in companies or between projects or um, across the industry itself. The construction industry is adversarial and claims conscious. Knowledge is power. Now, the future, or where, where we will be going and where we can go, is, is it's 3D, it's 4D, it's 5D, it's ND. So it, it's, it's all tied around BIM, it's all tied around 3D models, or a 3D model with program applied, which is 4D, or a 5D model, which is a 3D model with your costings and with your <coughs> program attached to it. We're looking at project collaboration systems, we're looking at knowledge management systems, we're looking at e-business, virtual construction, lean construction, integrated project delivery. I mean, these are all the, the sort of buzzwords and this is all stuff that we've covered in depth on the course itself. Um, you, you've all heard about cloud computing or, or, or cloud confusing. You're hit with these terms, 3D, ontologies, SAAS, mobile computing, 4D, portals, virtual construction. If you want to get from the, the, the past and present to the future, you need to understand these terms. Um, so it, it's, it's cloud confusing. It's just acronyms and words and words. On, on the Construction Informatics MSc itself, as Michael said, we have all these different modules. The Introduction to Construction Informatics, CAD Information Systems, e-business. You know, and when I started, I thought, hang on, it doesn't gel, it doesn't tie together. It's only after the 12 or 18 months that I see there's a logic there and knowledge actually builds as you're doing the course itself. It, it's tied back in with all of these things that are happening, integrated project delivery. Can you Should we come back up now in a second? Back in a second. <laughs> 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 Just going to bring that screen back up there. Progression on the course, knowledge builds from one module to the next. Um, what is construction informatics? Okay, well we can't read that there. This is a, the wire now. <laughs> it's 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 a, a fairly strange definition. Construction informatics studies the construction specific issues related to the representation, processing, and communication of construction specific information in humans and software. I don't understand, but it was one of the formal definitions I could find out there. To me, construction informatics, it's people. It's process, it's technology. It's a combination of all three. The three of them together are construction mm -hmm. informatics. Construction IT, on the other hand, is where the focus is purely on technology. It's, it's where you focus on technology. Construction informatics is where there's a focus on people and process. And numerous studies have found that on successful IT implementation projects, 80% of it is down to people and process, and 20% is down to technology. The technology is a small component of it. And that's surprisingly what I've learned on the course itself. And every module we've done, people and process are key. 
I mean, we've been equipped with the tools to do business process mapping and IDEF, zero data definitions and that sort of stuff. So construction informatics is people, <coughs> is process, and the small component is technology. <coughs> so how does the construction IT differ from construction informatics? Basically, we're just saying that construction IT its main focus on technology. Construction inform informatics looks at people and process. What's a construction informatics manager? Okay, they're an IT strategist, they're a communication enabler, an IT financier, they're an IT AEC expert, they're a learning advisor. So their idea is that they'll consolidate and streamline IT systems, they provide probably more important division and leadership for a company as regards IT, they'll enable communications internally and externally, the IT financier, the title is a bit is a bit misleading. Basically, they're there to evaluate um, enterprise initiatives and coordinate IT systems. And obviously, they're an IT AEC expert. Um, they're also there as, as a learning advisor to provide adoption strategies. Um, and we, I can make copies of the of the, the, the slides available. The future of the Irish AEC sector, um, as you all know, is global. I mean, the domestic industry is tanked. It output is down by 70%. Obviously, UK, <coughs> into the Middle East, Africa, there's some bit of work happening in Africa, a lot of Irish companies are, are getting involved there. North America, Europe, Poland and Russia, Australia and New Zealand. Some of the destinations are destinations for Irish firms. Some <laughs> of them are destinations for Irish individuals. Um, and just looking at what's actually happening out there, I mean, firms working in these markets, you need project collaboration and communication systems and skills, and individuals need the advanced uh, construction IT skills. Um, just in terms of looking at BIM usage worldwide, there's just some quick figures on it. In a survey in 2009, over 50% of the UK, US construction or, or North American construction industry maintained that we're using BIM. Right? These figures are taken from various McGraw-Hill reports. 36% of users in Western Europe were using BIM. They had France, Germany and the UK in those figures. So 36% of the market out there are using BIM in Western Europe at the moment. Um, and the interesting thing with the figures from Western Europe is that most of the users claim to be using BIM for five or more years. Surprisingly, the Middle East, the figure is only 25%. And the report maintains that their level of usage is quite basic. And the biggest hurdle to them using BIM more extensively is the lack of, of skilled operators or skilled people. Okay. So for any individuals there, BIM is where it's at. Um, in Australia and New Zealand, it, it, it's spreading, it's progressing, and there was no data available on Africa. Um, so Irish firms, and the, the big driver here for Irish firms is going to be the UK. All public contracts over 5 million euros have to use BIM by 2016 in the UK. They have to use BIM. And it's not using BIM in isolation, it's using it collaboratively. Um, what, what they've called for is, is all project and asset information and documentation is to be electronic and fully collaborative. But you might think it's not going to affect us here. It's going to affect every Irish contractor, subcontractor, consultant, subconsultant working into the UK. Five million isn't a big package. If you're a subcontractor and you're doing precast concrete or you're doing stainless steel, very soon you're in there, you have to use BIM, you have to know all about it. Um, all of these things, they need collaboration systems, they need <coughs> communication systems. In Ireland, in BIM terms, there's some green shoots appearing. A lot of it's being fostered by CETA, uh, ArcDocs, Raft down the back. You know, the, the risk of happening, there's a workshop with the Department of Education happening on, on BIM, a multidisciplinary workshop. There will be a trickle down e um, effect from the UK with the co uh, consultants and um, subcontractors having to work, work and upskill themselves. Just looking at the very different headlines in the press, you know, different firms working into Saudi Arabia, into um, different markets, Poland, um, Ken Stainless had a big contract um, from Wexford uh, through a Chinese company. Um, a lot of you are probably thinking, well, this construction informatics doesn't apply to us for small firms. The industry is dominated by small firms. 97% of construction enterprises employ less than 20 people. But it does. You, know, you might think, that you think this is all for the Pauls and it's all for the, 
the, the CISCs of this world. It's not. It applies to small firms as well. I mean, we all need competitive advantage. We all need to try and upskill. Um, just as, as part of the, of the, the, the Masters and, and as a result of the Masters, I mean, the, the nature of the work that I'm doing has changed. It's, there's been an awful lot more consultancy work. I mean, this was just a, a case study for an Irish fitter contractor who was pitching for work worldwide with, with a client. And what I've done on the Masters allowed me to put together a proposal for them that would allow them to run the operations from Dublin with their staff on site with, with um, iPads or smartphones been able to do an awful lot of the work and, and direct it and run it from Dublin. Um, you know, and this is stuff that I've learned on the course itself where they would use BIM to do design and layouts in 3D models and visualisations. They would use knowledge management, lessons learned and, and after action reviews to try and improve their quality assurance and strive towards zero defects. Collaboration, they would use um, virtual site meetings and project extranets. I mean, it can be done. I mean, people are saying, yeah, the technology is flaky. I mean, on the course itself, all of our lectures are delivered on the web. We use a thing called Adobe Connect Pro. Yeah, we have teething problems, we have issues at times. The technology does work. I mean, Skype works, it's free. You know, there's no issues with it most of the time. Um, another case study that I worked on was a proposal for an Irish roads contractor pitching for work in Africa. So, yet again, it was the stuff that I learned on the course, along with the Cisco stuff that I've done over the years, that allowed me to pull together a proposal for them. All right. And it's the same, it's mobile computing technology, it's communications, it's project collaboration systems that's driving, that's the engine behind these guys getting work out in these areas and being able to run it from Dublin. Um, on the course itself, so it's collaboration, it's communications, it's mobile computing. Um, on the course itself, it's sort of unique in that in each module you're given um, you're tasked with doing a project. You pick a problem from your own domain and you actually work it into your project itself. I mean, this was to do with mobile computing where I developed uh, a small sort of contract control system in, in a secure internet blog that a contractor could use from a, a smartphone or a tablet PC where they could um, look at their um, maintaining a site diary, recording labor hours, materials purchases, uh, health and safety issues, take progress photographs, all from a smartphone or a tablet PC. It's uploaded to a secure blog on the internet. The architect can be given access to progress photographs or to RFIs. Um, and this was just one uh, component on, on the mobile computing. Um, site diary, RFIs, variations, order materials. And it's free <coughs> software. It's all free software. It costs nothing to use it. Um, CAD information <coughs> systems, um, I did a case study with a QS practice on a small 3.5 million euro uh, development where I went and modelled the building in 3D and I extracted quantities from it. Um, I showed a potential saving of about 25% on time uh, taken to produce the bill of quantities, which translates to a saving for the quantity surveyor, a saving for the bottom line, maybe it goes towards profit or margin or covering overheads. Um, building collaborative systems, I was involved doing some work with a small contractor who was in a contractual dispute. Um, all of their, their small office, five or six people, they brought in a claims consultant, they brought in legal advisors. They needed to share all of their emails and all of their information with the, the uh, claims consultants. Um, the problem was all of their stuff was on five or six individual PCs. By deploying Gmail and by deploying post senior service from Gmail, they could securely give these guys access, they could go and search emails, they could search in all of the attachments with the emails seamlessly. Um, subs they implemented part of it, subsequently they went into liquidation and it's now gone to arbitration. Um, it was a small one million euro job, there was two and a half thousand emails, there was about 700 PDFs or drawings, 300 Excel files, 263 Word documents. So it was just a quick simple solution to let them share information and to build uh, legal documentation. Um, and finally, just on the applied knowledge management, um, we developed a small application, uh, a web-based database that would allow a quantity saving practice that uses Billsoft to upload price tenders or price bills of quantities to um, a, a secure web-based database that they could then use to search through tens or hundreds or thousands of, of, of price items. Um, and it was just under the knowledge management module. 
Um, that's it, folks. Um, thanks for listening. Um, questions or comments? Are we going to just do it at the end? <coughs> okay. Thanks, Robert. Thank you.